I didn't have the strength to really think about a lot because of the pain I, I was experiencing, but I definitely was thinking about my family and trying to hang on for them. My name is Heather Van Borum, and I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah. I grew up in Salt Lake. Don and I have five kids. We actually had two of our kids here during medical school. Don attended the University of Utah for medical school, and then we moved to Tucson, Arizona, where we had two more of our children, and then we moved back to Salt Lake, and eight years later, um, so there's a little gap, we have our, our youngest son. Uh, my name's Don Van Borum. Grew up in Salt Lake City. I'm a physician. I'm a surgeon. I specialize in trauma surgery, uh, motor vehicle crashes, motorcycle crashes, gunshots, stabbings. You know, we take care of the patient from the time they hit the emergency room until um, they leave the hospital. My husband and I met, it's kind of a funny story, we grew up nearby each other and he was a good friend of my older brother's. We went to a dance together and that was kind of the, the first time we went out and then we dated off and on uh, over the next few years and until it was time to get serious and, and uh, keep her to myself. <laughs> On December 20th, 2021, I was headed to Costco to pick up some things for the evening. My son wanted to have a, his friends over for a pizza party. It was a really busy day. I'd been uh, extremely busy uh, in the operating room all day long. The hospital where I work is, you know, is a couple hundred yards from the Costco where uh, she was shopping. I. Um, pulled into the parking lot and my husband had been working all day. He was actually going to pick up the Costco um, supplies, but I figured he was so busy, so I went ahead and headed down there. As I got out of the operating room, I called her uh, just as I was getting up to the 11th floor of the hospital and we were talking. So we were on the phone together and I parked quite far away from the entrance um, because it was so busy. And I started walking into Costco and as I was walking into Costco, there was a line of cars lined up to head out of the parking lot. And as I was going through, I heard a commotion and I turned around and I heard a car coming. And that car um, ended up pinning me um, to another car and I was thrown um, to the ground. As I'm talking in the phone, I said, Heather, Heather, what's going on? You know, and there's not a response. I find myself walking, you know, down the, the hallway on the 11th floor of the hospital where there's a window that I can look out over the freeway um, and, you know, looking to see, is there a crash? You know, I don't know what I was thinking, but, but still I was trying to understand what was going on. As I was laying there, I looked down and I saw all the blood and I knew that um, it wasn't good, that I was losing a lot of blood. And then I heard Heather say, I'm going to die. And yeah, I mean, that was, I, it's hard to explain, you know, really what I was feeling at that time. 
I mean, mostly feeling helpless. A woman named Terry that was holding my hand um, just said, stay with me, stay with me. And um, she kept talking to me and, and tried to keep me there and my eyes open. Then another voice came on the phone and a, a man introduced himself as a manager at um, Costco. And, and he said, well, we're on this, the south part of the parking lot. And I said, okay, I'll be right there. And I just you know, ran down the stairs, still not knowing exactly where uh, it was and just started running. And as I arrived um, to the ambulance, um, I could see that she was already uh, loaded in. Um, I was, you know, in my surgical scrubs and I just jumped in the ambulance. I looked down and, and saw Heather. Her head was kind of turned away. She was pale, eyes were closed. And I said, Heather, it's Dawn, I'm here. At that time, the person that um, was working on me announced to my husband that I had lost a limb. It was first at that moment that I really looked down and saw, you know, Heather had a, a tourniquet on both thighs. It was a blanket that was kind of covering up what was down below the knee. I couldn't really see that at the time. As this was all, as I was taking all this in, the ambulance had arrived the, the 200 yards to the ambulance entrance of the hospital where I work. And I just announced, hey, you know, this is my wife. We need to get her intubated, which is putting in a breathing tube so that we can, you know, get her comfortable. Um, I was planning to go out on a double date with my husband and some friends. I was 38 weeks pregnant and supposed to deliver in about a week. Um, I get a call from my dad. I remember sitting there at home and he said, I need to talk to you and your mom's been in an accident. A terrifying accident left the mother of five just moments away from death. Her physical life now forever changed. It was just five days before Christmas. Heather was shopping at this Costco in Murray. She was walking across the parking lot on the phone with her husband when suddenly... I heard a scream, a startled scream, and, and then I heard metal colliding and crunching. Heather was hit by an out-of-control car. An elderly man is believed to have hit the gas rather than the brake. It hit me um, below the knees. Heather's right leg was immediately severed. Her left leg was crushed. I couldn't believe it. I was... Um, in shock, I put it on speaker so my husband could hear what was going on, and my dad said, she, so she's lost her right leg, she's in critical condition, I'm with her at the hospital right now, and we're trying to stabilize her. Um, would you mind calling, gathering your siblings, and could you share this with them? Um, I said, absolutely. I grabbed my husband, and we knelt down in prayer, said a prayer, and then we packed a quick bag, just in case I were to deliver at, from the stress, and it was possibly going to induce the delivery of the baby, so. Uh, Heather was in the hospital um, four weeks. So she spent the first three weeks in the ICU. And during that period of time, uh, went through eight surgeries. In the operating room for, when I added it up, it was about 44 hours worth of surgery. You know, our first leg, or her right leg, the, a ways below the knee was just amputated with the impact of the, the two bumpers of the car. And the left leg was, as she stated, was the one that was the more damaged of the two. I needed to go ahead and amputate the leg and I made the decision on my own knowing that I wanted to live a full life and an active life. Drop her body and up she goes. Well, nice. Part of my inspiration in the hospital of wanting to even stay alive, but also to get better was that my oldest daughter, Annika, was pregnant and she was getting ready to deliver. And eight days after the accident, she was ready to deliver and they allowed her to come to the hospital that I was in. They did everything to get my mom there, so I was, it was about 9 p.m. on the 28th of December, and I had labored for, I think, 
maybe 16 hours and so I had a lot of time to think and the whole time I was just thinking of my mom you know what is our life gonna look like is she gonna be able to ever be happy again and um, I was very concerned most of the day and then nine o'clock rolled around and I was tired but it was time to deliver the baby and they wheeled me down to the delivery room just in time to see this ba beautiful baby come into this world and that truly was a gift in my life because it made me want to keep going and to keep moving forward. I was able to hold my daughter's hand as she gave birth and brought Greta Heather into this world. She named her Greta Heather and a funny story about that. She said, Mom, we're going to name her Greta Heather after you. And I said, oh, that is just wonderful. And she said, yes, she has some big shoes to fill. And then she kind of hesitated and got nervous. But we've also learned that humor and laughter is a great way to get through hard things. And we've been able to do that a lot as a family. Let's pop it. <laughs> Being a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has helped me immensely. While I was in the hospital, it became very clear to me that my Savior was um, walking through this experience with me. I had a, a picture that my children brought me in the hospital of Jesus Christ that was placed in the room and every time I came back from a surgery or any time I was in immense pain I looked at that picture and it reminded me of what Christ had gone through and I had decided in the hospital that I wanted to become a disciple of Christ, a follower, one that was amplifying his example and his his attributes in life and I knew that that was my purpose on this earth. Was it not such that those tourniquets got put on timely? Heather would have bled to death. She really would have. And watch her get up and walk around and interact with people, the fact that she's able to do that is for sure a blessing. It really pulled us together as a family, as a couple, I would be a fool and a liar if I didn't acknowledge the multiple times where I've personally seen God acting in our behalf and Heather's behalf. Watching, you know, Heather go through this and grow and, you know, become even more beautiful in multiple ways is tremendous. My son came to me. He asked if he could write a letter to the man who hit me, a letter of forgiveness and a letter hoping that this man could move on. And he actually wanted to take this man a, a gift on Christmas. And he chose a statue of Christ, the Christus. And so my son fashioned this letter of forgiveness and he brought it to me and he read it to me. And it was so beautiful. And this letter allowed me to move on immediately. The forgiveness that was in this letter, and I watched my children, each one of them, come to that forgiveness in that place of, we just want to move forward. And I, I'm so happy they did that because it really helped me be able to do so as well. My life on a day-to-day -day basis looks very different. As I have mentioned, I get up in the morning and it's hard. It's hard to look at my legs and think, oh wow, they hurt so bad yesterday, but I've got to put them on again. And um, sometimes my strength is a lot less than I want it to be. But I'm, I'm truly motivated by those around me who are championing me every day and want to see me 
doing the things I love to do. Although it is very hard, I move forward and I keep going and I try to look at my day and think of what's the most important things of the day and usually it's whether it's being with my granddaughter and spending time or doing activities with my family or doing service for others. Those are the most important things that I want to accomplish in my days. They often say, you know, the, the path uh, to sorrow is separation and the path to happiness is connection. Um, I asked her if she'd allow me to post some things publicly on social media and just share because people really wanted to know what was happening with her and there were people all around the world praying for her and and so we came up with um, flower power and flower comes from my mom has always been called flower in her family and um, so we decided to go with that slogan and from there created a social media account that I've been running for the past year. There's people from New Zealand, there's people from England, people from South America that reach out and say what an amazing inspiration my mom is in the story. I know there's a path for me. I know there is so many good things to come. What I would say to someone who is struggling is the more you open yourself up to others and the more you um, humble yourself and allow others to help you, the more you are able to heal inside.